everybody questwise here and today i want to give you a little bit of a video recap of a game that i just ran uh yesterday morning uh for a group of local players here uh in town and uh it was my first time running castles and crusades and i just want to give you sort of a little video recap of like how that went and what the adventure was about and sort of the beginning of our campaign uh, to kind of give you a feel of, of what I thought. Now, I've been a fan, like I said, I've known about Castles and Crusades for quite a long time, and you can see back in the catalog some of the videos I've done about um, about my sort of new fascination with this game. And uh, so that's no surprise, um, but I finally was able to get this to a table, and I have a group that we're going to run a, a decently long campaign with this as well, too. And I just wanted to share with you my initial thoughts of how the game went and and sort of the campaign as it's progressed so far and uh, what I think of the system now that I've actually finally gotten it to a table. First of all, I can say that my love for this game has not abated uh, and in fact has maybe increased even more. Um, it's a, a super simple game. We're, we're playing at B-flat kind of rules as written out of the Castles and Crusades, uh, the, the player's handbook itself. Um, and maybe later down the road, we might add a few things in, um, uh, like uh, some optional rules from the Castle Keeper's Guide. But right now, I'm trying to keep it simple. Uh, these, uh, the players that I have have never, they've played before, they're seasoned veterans when it comes to, to role playing, but have never played Castles and Crusades before. Now, if you haven't played it before, uh, and you're familiar with any of the D20 games out there like, you know, D&D, &D, uh, any of the iterations of that Pathfinder, you, you're going to find yourself very welcome, very much at home uh, with this game. Um, we uh, got together yesterday morning, and we they'd already created characters. They all have the rule book, and so they were able to create characters ahead of time. But we talked about sort of their... We talked about the characters and introduced had everybody introduce their own uh, and uh, and how maybe the relationships uh, work and if they'd known each other before um, and we had decided that uh, two of the characters um, we had three characters that were human and we had four characters total three that were human and one that was half work what I'm using is a kind of a twist thing I'm using the codex Germania uh, as a sort of a setting guide um, but post Iron Age it's almost as if the Christianity had not shown up, and we uh, still in a fantasy world, but like that that type of religion had not shown up, and so that the, the the German mythology had continued, and the setting is more of a early medieval type setting. Uh, so we're still keeping with a sort of high fantasy feel, although magic itself is very uh, miraculous when it does happen. It's not a common everyday occurrence uh, in the the setting that we're doing. So the players, uh, we had three humans. Two of them were related. They were brother and sister. Um, one of them, the half-orc, is a merchant. He, he's a mercenary, basically, who uh, is very addicted to the ale that comes out of this town that we're setting the, the initial uh, adventure in. Uh, and so always takes uh, jobs that bring him back to this area. Uh, so he knows a lot of the people in the area as well, too. And the other is a traveling wizard who spent his life as a sage, uh, collecting knowledge and lore, and he's come here on his journeys uh, to collect more of that kind of stuff. We, uh, I named the town, the initial town, the starting sort of adventure queue uh, in a, a town called Blueholm, which is an homage to uh, the Blue Book of Holmes, uh, Holmesian D&D, which is under the sort of earldom of Frosthold uh, in this region. And so the characters that we did some introductions, the characters all got to talk to each other. Um, you know, the, the the time period was sort of the end of winter, beginning of spring, when the sort of trade routes had begun to to open back up and the roads were passable again. And so uh, the, the characters all kind of converged, and there was some trading starting to happen. Um, and uh, what had happened was that um, one evening a mother came crying for help that her son was very sick and she needed assistance. Uh, so the players went to work um, and began to do their thing, trying to discover if they knew 
What had happened to the boy, they had discovered that he had not been wounded in any way, but that it looked like he may have been poisoned. Uh, they began to do some research and questioning some of the people and the mother from around the town and uh, eventually discovered that the uh, the well uh, that, that serves all the fresh water to this, uh, to this town had been tainted in some way or is tainted in some way. And the wizard player decided he was going to start collecting some samples and begin to do his research into what this stuff might be. He had never encountered these types of things before, though he had some knowledge of working knowledge of poisons and the herbs in the past. They also met a couple cool, really uh, cool NPCs. Um, they met the burgermeister of the town who was in charge, who's sort of a, um, he's an ex-soldier who's very good at keeping the peace and avoiding chaos, but when it comes to personal relationships, tends to be a little uh, nervous and shaky on those, those types of things. Uh, we met um, uh, uh, Hilda, who is the uh, local healer in the town. She's basically like an alchemist, an herbalist. Uh, she doesn't know any magic, but she knows the way around herbs and, and medicine and such. And we met Olga, who is the mother of this child, who is a widow whose husband had died uh, in an accident a, a year before. And so she was now a widow with three children, and one of them obviously is sick. We ended the session with uh, them in uh, Olga's house, or excuse me, in Hilda's house, in the healer's house, and she was attending to the boy and giving it some herbs, uh, giving him some herbs to see if she could in any way um, uh, help out uh, with uh, trying to, to, to you know, negate the effects of the poison. Um, there was a little bit of magic cast. Uh, they cast first aid on the boy to sort of try to uh, stop any... Um, types of progression of the poison and such as well too so we got a nice little introduction to the setting that i've created and uh as well as sort of an introduction of characters and some npcs that are going to grow from there as well too so our next session they're going to do some further investigation into the well and find out that things are going a little bit worse than they imagined them to be so my first initial impressions of this game uh it's wonderful it's super easy to teach i was able to tell everybody at the table how to play this game uh, within like five to ten minutes and they, they get clicked very very quickly um, didn't have any combat encounters as of yet uh, but we did have some roles being made uh, for things such as intelligence of trying to identify things um, and um, recalling knowledge and that kind of stuff as well too but Great, great game. Lots of room for narrative-driven games, and that's what I really love about role-playing. And that, again, my personal sort of uh, way that I love to roll games or play role-playing games is that I want very narratively open games that allow me to tell or allow us, the players, and the, and and myself to tell some really amazing stories that the rules don't get in the way, but that they add to the narrative of the storytelling. So, I'm I. I'm a huge fan. What can I say? I look forward to finding more uh, copies, uh, or you know, getting some more of these books and, and furthering the adventures. But I'll, I'll continue to do these throughout these little recaps throughout the the campaign to let you know how things are evolving, uh, and any problems we've run into, or or, or, or things that we found really successful uh, with with the game itself. So Castles and Crusades by Troll Lord Games. I'm Questwise, and until next time, I am out.